Good afternoon, co conference. Kloiso, Borada. Yes, I did spend three years here and I managed to get a few words out, so apologies to those who tried to train me in Welsh for a long period of time. Thank you, Stephen, once again. I love coming to Clandid, and I hope you do too. It's sort of a wonderful day that we've got here. And I want to express once again to you, my friends, my immeasurable pleasure of being able to stand here and speak before you. For those of you like me who are committed to an honourable task of preserving the principles of democracy and self-determination, principles that make this country great and for which over the centuries so many before have risked their lives. And I commend you for taking that stand for freedom and a stand against ever-increasing powers of the European Union, a stand that means that we can break free from the shackles and a stand that will allow this country to be once again great become outwardly looking, forward thinking, a global trading nation, believing ourselves, believing in the pe people of this country. So once again, thank you for being here and joining in this, the fight of our life. Mm. But as Stephen has said, there are those who are going to be fighting hard against us. And it's recently also shown by those who don't believe in Britain. They don't believe we're good enough. In fact, they believe the opposite. And recently, on a daily politics show, I was sat with David Lammy, the Labour MP for one of the seats in North, uh, of North London. And during that case, I was setting out the very positive case of why Commonwealth citizens, black, mixed, ethnic people like myself, should support leaving the European Union. And I raised a very important issue of how two and a half million Indians fought alongside people like my grandfather to defeat a European dictator. And David Lammy, said, you were right, one million of them died for the European project. <laughs> well, it was quite amusing, because there are good pictures out there that see me doing a double take. <laughs> the European project, I said. Surely he's made a mistake. So I turned to him, David, did you really say the European project? And without any hint of irony, he said, of course. They died for the European project. Well, this time I said, I'm sorry, David. They didn't die for the European project because the only European project at that time was world domination by a dictator who wanted to kill millions of people, who wanted to put Jews in, burning, uh, in, in ovens, who wanted to murder the disabled and kill those who were gay. They didn't die for the European economic community. They didn't die for the European Union. They died for freedom and democracy and the British parliamentary system. Well, the great thing about that is you're going to hear lots of people on the Remain side now doing what we call doing a lammy. <laughs> and they'll name lots of things of what the European project is for. Apparently, as I understand it, the man landed on the moon for the European project. <laughs> Jeff Hurst scored a hat-trick in the World Cup for the European project. And Marilyn Monroe's skirt flowed up for the European project. Well, don't listen to them, ladies and gentlemen, because there is nothing good about the European project. But take our own Prime Minister, David Cameron. He, yep. Well, yes, sir, but I'm not allowed to say that on stage. I know that was picked up. He promised the people of Britain that we would renegotiate fundamental change to the European Union. He promised to listen to us on the issue that concerns us most, immigration. He promised his negotiations would bring back border controls that we'd be able to take control of our borders and take control of benefits in work and out of work. But he failed, didn't he? And not only did he fail, one of his best friends, Michael Gove, a justice minister, said he failed to secure a deal in the European Courts of Justice could override it. Well, all we got was empty promises from an empty man. Because the issue of immigration and EU controls of our borders are not going to go away. As we look to the shores of southern Europe, we know this year alone already 110,000 economic migrants and asylum seekers have entered Europe via Greece. And by the end of the year, they estimate there'll be 2 million more. These numbers are vast. This is not the end of the immigration story to the UK because the future bodes ill if we fail to win this referendum because the EU extends its empire every day. It wants to make it bigger. 
We heard from Nigel this morning that Bosnia has already put in its application to join the EU. Serbia is lined up with it. There are already deals with Ukraine to allow some visa controls. And now we know that it's Turkey is looking to be fast-tracked by the Germans into the European Union. That's 200 more million people to come into the European Union with the ability to travel freely across Europe through a Schengen system and be able to go and live wherever they like. There is no more reason that we need an Australian points-based system than that so that we can have talented people coming into this country. And actually, there is a reason why we need an Australian points-based system. We only need to look at Natalie Bennett as a reason why <laughs> we need to ensure we put our own controls in place. We want talented individuals who can speak clearly, bring and promote a positive Britain. Unfortunately, we have Natalie Bennett. <laughs> but freedom and democracy are the core reasons for us to leave, but they aren't the only reasons. The mainstream media are willfully ignoring Turkey's application and the inevitable ability of them joining the EU. Turkey now has more than 72 million people. But because of its high birth rate, the Turkish Statistics Institute have said that by 2023, the population will have surpassed the 90 million mark. Indeed, the United Nations' own estimates is that the population of Turkey will have reached 105 million people by 2050. These figures alone will show that Turkey, if it joins the EU, will become the largest member state and therefore have the largest number of MEPs, the largest ability to try and control and govern the European Union. Officially, unemployment in Turkey is around 10%, 7 million people. Youth unemployment is at 19%, 5.9 million people. This is the highest of all OECD countries, where the average salary is £540 a month. Even if Turkey managed to have a magnificent economic recovery with Turkish companies being able to offer sufficient employment opportunities, there is nothing there that will bring them anywhere near the opportunities those people will have with British companies in British jobs and British benefits. Turkish scientists estimate a potential emigration pattern of up to 15 million people from Turkey if they get EU membership with the first 10 years of them joining the EU, with over estimates of between one and two million of them heading to the United Kingdom. It is because of that risk to our economy of low wages, job displacement, pressures on hospitals and schools that we must take this threat seriously. We must leave the European Union because it isn't about the status quo, it's about massive change and that change will impact Britain more than many other countries in Europe. So David Cameron talks about prosperity, but there's also security. The, the same experts believe that the fear of millions of migrants coming from North Africa, Middle East, and Turkish states of Central Africa will take advantage of the barely controllable Turkish land borders with the countries via Turkey. We see that migration is now uncontrollable, but just imagine this is a country that borders Iran, Iraq, and Afghanistan. How do you think ISIS were able to get their nefarious and evil people into Paris? They got them through porous borders and a Schengen system that wasn't able to stop them. How do you think we're going to stop those millions of people and ISIS doing the same thing through the borders of Afghanistan, Iran, and into Turkey? We will not be able to do so. The only way is by leaving the European Union and securing our own borders. That is the security that David Cameron should understand, and that is the security that we believe in. As a formal sec secular state, even Turkey is not accepted in the Islamic world. Moreover, the Turkish are not particularly liked in Arabia, not least because of Turkey's 500 years of brutal colonial rule under the Ottoman Empire. Meaning if we allow Turkey in, not only would we have an open border with lack of security and the dangers that lies therein, we'd have economic ma mess in the United Kingdom. I want Britain to be free from the risks of mass migration 
from an ever-expanding empire of the European Union, of Bosnia, Serbia, Ukraine, Turkey, or any other country that they want. I want to be free from the risks of ISIS. I want, do not want people traffickers making billions on the backs of innocent poor people who deserve to be looked after. I believe in Britain, and I believe that we must ensure that we leave the European Union for freedom, prosperity, security, and control of our own nation. Thank you very much.